Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over importing all of the graphics that we had in the, uh, in the previous versions of this board. This is the last video, and so this is the first step that we're actually showing because this is the PCB in reverse. So we're going to put, be putting over, going over all the graphics that are involved in making this board here. Uh, you can see there's a couple of things. There's the outline. There is the silk screen, which is this white piece. And then there's the uh, copper itself which involves the, uh, the LED, the lens, and then the text here, and then also the solder mask relief, which is also the same things, but just exposing them. And then finally, well, I guess on the back side, I'll drop that. Uh, on the back side, there's the regular components, and we won't have to worry about that as much. So let's take a look at what we're doing here with the, um, we need to go and create the footprints from the art, art. And I should mention as well that the art has already been made, and so that is in your folders that, you'll be, that you should have downloaded. Um, if you want to make a custom board, you know, some of this is you're going to have to kind of figure out what's your palette available between solder mask and exposed copper, non-exposed copper, all that stuff. So uh, the artwork is up to you, but the importing of it is up to us here. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We're in, this is the uh, fourth version of the, uh, this is uh, file four. So this is actually when we were doing the schematic creation in the last video. So we're going to go open project here. We're going to go up one folder here and go to the bonus. This is import PCB artwork here. There we go. OK, so now we're in this folder. We're going to go into the bitmap to component com converter here. We're going to load a bitmap from that same one. And you see we're already in this folder here. We're going to go, uh, it's, but it's under not a camera. So if you go back up a, a folder here, there's the hardware folder. And then up one is the image folder as well. That's where I stored all the, the raw images. So we're going to start with the silk screen. OK, and we've got the silk screen uh, selected here. So if we go to the different, these all look the same, and that's because they're, it's not a color picture. If this is a color picture, what would happen is first it would set it to grayscale. That would be some kind of like, um, you know, instead of just two colors, black and white, it would instead be, uh, you know, a bunch of grays as well. And then you would go through, and the slider here allows you to select the different values of gray. And again, in this case, it's not relevant because there's only two colors. Uh, but because we, that's because I actually made this, this artwork to only have black and white. Okay, so we're going to hit export. We're going to find a folder to put this in. I put this in, again, at the top level of the project. I put this in uh, the hardware folder, and then not a camera .pretty. Uh, And then we're going to call this uh, well, NAC underscore silk screen. OK. And that's good. Now let's go and open up the layout, see if there's anything here. Should be a blank folder here. OK. Now the last time I opened this up, I did have an extra library in here that I do not want, so I'm going to delete this one. There we go. So this is the uh, folder that we, we just called out there and that we put the stuff into. And so let's go and hit O to place a component. Hopefully it loads up. I have had a crash once today so far. Looks like it is loading up. So I'm not sure what the library is going on here. Now I am moving from a, again, this is, this is a, uh, you know, KiCad 4.0 to KiCad 5.0, so we'll see if uh, if maybe it's having some issues there. It looks like it is. Pulled it up finally. So uh, we're going to do NAC. It should be under N. So there's NAC. And we have our footprint here. So we'll place that right in the middle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to set a, uh, a zero point here. Now you can set this wherever you want to really, but this I set all of these, uh, all of the pieces of art to be on the same center point. So you see where my mouse is right there. That is the center point of that drawing. And uh, so if I set, if I hit the space bar here, you see in the lower right corner, DX, DY was, was just set to 0, 0. I'm going to maintain that. Uh, and then not only that, I'm going to go back to it. And then I'm going to set this as my uh, uh, grid origin point as well. So on 0, 0. There, and there. Okay, so now I've set that as my grid uh, center point as well. And then what I can also do is set this grid to something just monstrous, right? So now the, the grid is on really, really big terms. So if I move this thing around, it's on just really big, it's, it's on five, five millimeter steps right now. So there we go, it's on zero. So now it's back on zero, zero. And let's go and uh, do these other, other imports. Okay, so we're going to do uh, load bitmap. Let's do the, uh, let's do the copper next. Okay, we're going to hit export here. Now we do, you know what you notice here is we don't have the, the selections for copper or uh, well we have solder mask. We do not have the selection for copper, so we're going to go and actually edit that here in a second. We're going to hit export. 
We're going to say non camera underscore CU. Okay. Let's go and just do the other ones real quick as well. Uh, we'll do solder mask. This one will actually select a solder mask, export uh, NAC underscore SM. And then finally, the outline, export NAC outline. OK. So um, let's now go into the library or the footprint editor, right? So that's here. Pull this up here. Okay, so we're gonna go and grab. We're gonna go grab that footprint. Uh, this is the. So we want the copper. Okay, we're gonna select all this stuff. Hopefully, edit it. Well, let's just do it one at a time, I guess. Uh, and then we can just select the. So this is a polygon right now. So that's what we're we're looking at. We can edit it and hit. Copper. Unfortunately, I think each of these might need to be edited individually. Yeah, I think we do. Shoot. That's a little annoying. So we could go in, and if you've seen the other video that I made, I made a video recently where I said, oh, well, we could, uh, you know, we could go and do this programmatically as well. And that's uh, might might actually be easier in this way because it would be a uh, find and replace versus a you know select and uh, click and all that other stuff. But there are some tedious things like this once in a while. Let's see. Hopefully this isn't too long. Well, uh, yeah. Let's just uh, we'll hit save on this one, and then some of it will be we'll leave the rest for uh, for later. Uh, let's look at the other out uh, the other ones here. Now you notice there's nothing in here. Oh, I'm sorry. There is something in here. Uh, but it's, oh, this is imported differently here. Aha, OK. So I need this one that was actually not done properly. It looks like the uh, selection, it was pulled in oddly. So let's go back. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. Let's go and place these other components quickly. Um, so we hit O, click to start. We've got. Recently used there, we want the these. So let's do copper. This is mostly copper here. And now you see, because it's right over top, it, it sinks right in because they're all centered on the same point here. Let's click again. Put in the not a camera dot solder mask. And again, it just sinks right in because they're all on the same center point. OK. Um, and then finally. We need to go back to the outline editor here. Let's go and grab grab this guy here. Load bitmap. This is a very fine trace. You can even see it on this one. There's not much going on there. And so I think I didn't do this properly. So it's a little bit too, you need to select a little bit darker there. So now if I go all the way to the right, you see it's a little bit of a thicker, uh, thicker thing there. All right, we're going to hit export. We'll call it outline. OK. And now let's go in and see what that looks like on the editor. Okay, editor's in the wrong window. Here we go. Okay. Now this one I do not believe we'll be able to select select as the uh, as the uh, outline layer, so the edge cuts layer, rather. We're not able to actually select that here. So in this case, we need to go. This is not going to be a standard operation. And the reason for that is that this is, this is a polygon. And if you see the edge cuts layer, it's actually usually set as multiple lines between one point and another. So what you do is instead, instead of sh setting a shape, you see how this is kind of an odd, oddly shaped outline here. What we could do is we could go through and we could drop this in and then trace over it with the outlines. Uh, that's a tedious process, but that is probably the the most um, that's the most in line with what KiCad wants you to do thing here, uh, because like I said, this is a polygon and not not a set of discrete lines. But what we can do is we can uh, so let's we'll close this out. This is where we can go and edit the file. So let's do uh, so 
I'm going to open this with Atom or whatever your text editor of choice is. Anything with a, uh, with a find and replace function is what we're really looking for here. Pokey, pokey computer this morning. There we go. What we see here is we see, uh, this is what I've shown in the past ones, we see that there is the front silk screen, front silk screen, and front CU on this one. We can leave that. What we're really, all we're really looking for is the end of this polygon here. There should be a single edge.cut. Hit that, save on that. OK. And now when we drop this in, I'm hopeful that we can grab the So now you see it is yellow. It is on a different layer here. And there we go. So now we have now we have the edge cuts here. Now you see that some of the stuff is uh, the it doesn't really like that graphic there, but uh, it should be it, at least it's okay at the board. The board house usually is able to understand what I'm trying to do versus the you know they're just kind of going on the outside of the line here because ultimately what happens is at the end of the day you know when you send this out so you go through all of your layout here. You put it all the way back to uh, sending sending out Gerber's. Uh, the, the Gerber's flattens everything down. It's kind of the equivalent of like a, uh, a Photoshop file versus a JPEG or a PNG. You're effectively sending PNGs or JPEGs to uh, to the board house. That's what a Gerber is. It's a you know it's a centralized uh, generalized file that the board house has to kind of understand. And so they have Gerber processing tools. And so whereas the 3D tool might not be able to understand the outline layer like we're doing here the board house does. And what they do is they basically say, okay, here's, here's the out of, outside of your, your, your edge cuts layer. We're just going to route around that and create our tool paths from that. And that's ultimately what's going to happen there. So uh, let's take one quick look. Let's take one quick last look here. I think it's going to have the same error that we've had in the past. Yeah, so it has the same board error outline problem. So it does have that same board error outline problem here. But in this case, uh, it's, it's basically grabbing the extents of of where everything is here and saying, okay, well, that's probably where the, the board is supposed to be. You see here that we have the copper and then we have silk screen over top of it, so it's a little bit different here, but otherwise, uh, it's what we wanted. If we went through and we finished doing all the copper, uh, moving it from the uh, silk screen layer to the, the copper layer, uh, we would be, be seeing all of that as gold there. But you see everything else that is listed as gold is gold. So that is the end of the PCB design in reverse. Uh, we've gone through, so if we, let's say, uh, let's go reverse of the reverse. So the order of operations was we imported artwork, we created a schematic, we import, we uh, associated the schematic with footprints, we imported the footprints and did layout, we generated Gerbers, and then we took a look at those Gerbers. That's what we're going to send off to the board house. We obviously did all that stuff in reverse. And I would recommend that if you went and you followed along with this piece of artwork here, that you now go and you finish out the board. And so you've had repetition now. So you should have generated Gerbers four times, you or five times. You should have done layout three times, four times. You should have done uh, association three times, schematic twice, and artwork once. Uh, and that's about the order that I would recommend things normally, uh, because those are you know usually you don't get that kind of repetition in that direction. If you have any other questions about how to do this board or anything else relating to the Contextual Electronics videos, you can always go to the forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. We do teach this stuff. We teach not only how to design boards, but we also design, talk about the electronics and the underlying theory and concepts behind electronics. What is a resistor? What value should I use? What is an LED? How does an LED work? How does a transistor work? All those things. That's over at contextualelectronics.com. And finally, if you have questions about KiCad, this is KiCad 5.1 that we're using here. You can go and ask at the forum. That's forum.kiCad.info. Thanks for watching this short course. Thanks. For, see you next time.